if we play those songs badly, um, that could just be the really negative experience that some kid I is having because we've we we've not bothered to make this thing sound at least semi semi decent. Hello and welcome to Deconstructing Worship, a series of positive and constructive conversations about the current culture of modern worship. We are your hosts, Steve Quantic and Kyle Trevor. Hello everyone and welcome into Deconstructing Worship episode 6. We're at 6! Episode 6, fantastic. Yeah! And this week we have the very handsome... Wayne Sanders. Yeah, I, dude, I can't wait. I've been, like genuinely, I've been really excited all week to get you on. <clears throat> so Wayne is an amazing buddy of mine, and we all actually play in the same band, which is really, really we cool. Do. Okay, Wayne, I won't yes. kind of like introduce you myself because you're very capable at doing that. Um, and I know, I don't know. That <laughs> when we talk, <laughs> when we talk, we can talk for a very, very, very 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 long time so i'm we, sure you won't can. have trouble with this uh, so just give yourself just a little introduction just talk about like who you are like what your involvement with kind of like church worship and all that all that beautiful stuff that'd be awesome dude um i am wayne my name is wayne and i have been involved in worship in various forms for many 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 years um i'm currently still involved in worship in my local church um it's always a huge privilege and honor to be to be so and um, yeah, I'm originally from Durban in South Africa. So that's a whole, whole another world away. Um, and yeah, that's, that's kind of me. The mo that, that's a sort of succinct version of me. So w when, uh, when did you kind of like get involved in like playing in a worship team? Okay, so... Um, that would have been sort of in my late teens. And actually, th that, that was my introduction, introduction to playing music. Um, okay. I, I went along to, to church. I went along to a youth group. And um, it was unlike anything. I mean, it was small. It was in, in, a, in a double garage. It wasn't South Africa, so everything was quite big there. So it was a relatively <laughs> big garage. But it was just in someone's double garage. It wasn't even a church, so to, so to speak. And uh, it was a youth group, just a whole bunch of, of kids in this garage. Two of the girls had guitars and they were singing choruses, songs, um, which up to that point, uh, my only real experience with anything vaguely church related had been mostly hymns, one or two kind of uh, more contemporary songs that we'd sort of occasionally heard on very, very special occasions. So they, they were just singing these songs on guitar it was an amazing amazing that was my introduction to to that kind of worship and i started going to the church that was affiliated well that the youth group was a part of and for some crazy reason i i, I remember distinctly kind of just having this thought or praying it or, or or whatever and going this is really cool and and the the worship on a sunday morning is amazing um but i know for a fact that that is definitely not my ministry or my thing, definitely not the thing I'll be involved in. And I don't know wow. why I had that. I know it was crazy. I don't know why I, I had that particular thought, um, but I couldn't have been more wrong. <laughs> and and <laughs> I literally just got chatting to those two, the same two girls, so my friend, two friends of mine, Nicole and Lindy. Um, Lindy also played piano and, and Nicole played a bit. And I, I literally just sat down the one night and said, hey, so how does this piano thing work? And, and that they showed me what the names of the notes were up to that point i'd never i didn't even know what the names of the notes on a piano were and they literally just gave me a few pointers um i found this battered out old organ in our in our garage um it didn't even have proper notes it just had it just had white notes and black notes painted on so you could no, only no play way. in one it didn't actually have proper shafts and flats so you could only just play in one key. That was going, and, and it was a, a pump organ. So you had to like pump it with your foot to get some sound going. <laughs> That's brilliant. This is amazing. So I mean, it was, it was pretty cool. And then I also found a, um, an old guitar, which was probably the most rubbish guitar on the planet. It looked like, I, don't, I still to this day don't know whether it was a nylon string or a steel string. It was one of these that was kind of 
clearly the, pe the people who made it didn't know the difference. And so it sort of was both. It had steel strings on it, but it, w it was a mess. And there were only four strings on it too. So I just tuned it to <laughs> a major chord. And, and that literally was my most, in, in South Africa, we'd say fun galore. It's a Zulu word. It just, I, I, I don't have a translation, but it was my fun galore introduction to, to music on a, a four string guitar tuned to a chord, a pump organ with no sharps and flats. <laughs> um, but I, I managed to make some kind of music out of that. And I think sometimes, sometimes when you've got, I, I've heard people say, you know, when you, when you take away, sometimes when we take away everything that we are used to and we, we limit ourselves to say eight notes or, or, or something crazy, we can actually be more creative. And I think there's some truth in that. Oh, hell so, yeah. So, so that, that was literally my introduction to, to music. Um, and a recorder, I had a recorder. Um, but it was also, Satan's instrument, that is. <laughs> it is. It is. It is the instrument of, of Beelzebub. Unless it's, unless it's played properly. And that can be quite sweet, actually. Yeah. But um, I had that. And, and, but at the same time, I, I think the, the drive behind that was there was something inside me that really wanted to call out to God and specifically in music and in singing and, and, in, and all of that sort of thing. So. The two sort of worked in tandem. My, uh, my introduction to, to music and introduction to worship kind of happened along the, the same lines. So was that, um, so you were, you kind of hinted at that before the youth group that there were earlier experiences of congregational worship. What's the kind of earliest one you can remember? Cool. So I went to church as a kid. Um, again, there was something in me that, 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 that clearly was wanting to connect with God. And so I go to church with my parents. Um, we didn't really have too much option, um, which is fair. And we went to a very tra traditional Presbyterian church. I'm sure most Presbyterian churches are like way hip and cool and trendy nowadays. So this is not a, 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 any indictment in, of any sort on <laughs> Presbyterian church or any church. But the, the particular church that we went to, it was very traditional. It was like all hymns and, and that sort of thing. Church organ, organ, blue rinse brigade, choir, that, that whole whole sort of thing. We weren't often in church because we would go to Sunday school. And, and I suppose they, they just sang some kind of songs. For some reason, that didn't really connect. They, they, were, they weren't great songs. Um, but when we did go to church and, and it was hymns, that obviously would have been some introduction to congregational worship. But it, it, it just, I tried to like them. I, I didn't succeed very well. Because mm. um, <laughs> it, it's interesting, isn't it? Because like, you know, I think, you know, we were talk, we kind of equated it in a previous episode to like, you know, studying Shakespeare. Like you're forced to study Shakespeare at school. And, yeah. and suddenly when you're older, you realize he's one of the greatest playwrights who ever lived. And then when you're younger, exactly. you don't really enjoy the hymns. And then when you're older, you revisit them and you see the poetry of them and everything like that. And it's yeah. just like, wow. So was, was, did you have a later rediscovery of the old hymns? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I think that was about last week. <laughs> no, <Nice. laughs> no, no I, I absolutely did. You know, and, and you're right. You, that, is, that is a brilliant analogy. You, you kind of get to that stage. I think the reality of it is that your, your musical tastes change. They, they constantly change. Mm. And so you, some forms of music that are, are ordinarily or, or previously was not that fussed on, um, you sort of rediscover them later on in life and they can be very exciting. And so exactly as you say, you know, you, you discover some of those old hymns, the, the poetry of them is, is insane, but also some of the melodies are brilliant. And, and sometimes... And again, not to be unfair on anybody, but sometimes our experience of something like it can be can have can be a negative one because the execution of them is not fantastic. Mm -hmm. You know, if you have the greatest hymn, but it's it's just sort of smashed out an organ, not particularly well, and it's it's sort of sung. Um, a lot of that older congregational worship and, and singing. The problem with it is, is that it, it lacked a lot of conviction. Mm. Um, if the choir delivered something really well, that might be something else. But when, when the congregation sang, you, you know how it is, we would kind of, everybody would join in sort of halfway through the bar. Yeah. And, and, and everyone <laughs> yeah. waits for the, the person next to them to start singing. So it's, it's always... <laughs> so you miss like the first couple of words. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's always, <laughs> you know, there's that Mr. Bean sketch where he's, 
he, he's yes. into singing hymns, and it, it, it's kind of like that. That's 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 funny because it's true. Mm. Um, and so I, I think, and I think it's an important aspect of all of this. Even in our churches today, if we execute that worship or those songs, if we play those songs badly, um, that could just be the really negative experience that some kid is, is having because we've we, we've not bother to make this thing sound at least semi mm. semi decent that's a fantastic um, it's a fantastic point so are you kind of saying that if you know the content rather than wasn't really the thing that was an obstacle to you it was the presentation when you were a kid yeah you know, I, I, in some some respects i think i think there's some some truth in that because some of those some of those songs um i remember as, as far back as when i was a kid in high school, so I, I, I would have been a junior. I would have been in in first year of of high school. I don't know what they call it nowadays. It changes, and I've changed country, so I've tried to keep up with it. I just don't know what it's called, <laughs> but it's it's like around about when you're thirteen or fourteen. I remember being in the, in the school choir then by default. I mean, you you to get into the choir, you either had to have a very you either had to have a really 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 bad voice. To not get into the choir, you had to have a really, really bad voice, or you had to be a really skilled singer and be able to actually sing deliberately out of tune to not get into the choir. Nobody, <laughs> nobody wants to be in the choir. It was like the, the most uncool thing. So if you're just an average, average dude who, who just was caught unawares by the choir teacher who said sing, um, you were in the choir. So I, I landed up in the choir through no choice of my own. Um, oh, that's funny. And it, 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 no, it wasn't funny. Believe me, it wasn't funny. <laughs> but um, and and sort of bumbled through and 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 didn't particularly enjoy it. But so even at that age, like thirteen, fourteen, I must be, I'm, yeah, probably about fourteen. Even at that age, we got to the end of the year, and we were an all boys school. That, that's how it was in South Africa. But the girls' high school, our, our sister school, came over to us to do a joint um, carol service, and one of the songs that the girls sung was "Oh Holy Night." And I still yeah. remember there's, there's this girl called Brigitte. She sang the solo and the choir backed her. And I just listened, to, I heard that and I went, oh my goodness. It was, it was otherworldly. So even mm. at that age, being exposed to hymns and, and, and none of them really grabbing me when I heard that presented so beautifully, something just, just kind of went, wow. That's so awesome. I, I, I do. I, I, think, I think we can... I think sometimes we let ourselves off the hook and I'm sure we'll talk more about this, but I think we, we need to be, we need to be really aware that how we present something is, is going to potentially have quite an effect on the people who are hearing it. And like I said, there could be some kid who may ordinarily be listening to a very different style of music from what we are presenting in church, no matter how hip we may think we are. You know, we, we, we could be playing the guitars and the drums and stuff, but some kid who only listens to Billie Eilish or anything on the charts, if you actually listen to stuff like that, it, it's like a million miles away from what we play in church. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. And, that, and, yeah. That's, and, and that's fine. So if there's some kid who only listens to that, even what we're doing, as hip as we think it is, is going to go, wow, this is like, I just don't relate. But if it's presented really well, there's a, a, probably a better chance that they will. So... Do you think, Wayne, that um, that you know pre the presentation in terms of like presenting it with, I guess, if if I'm understanding correctly, presenting it with conviction and passion, can that supersede style? Can that like does does style that can, you know is style still a good entry point, or you know does it need to just be, hmm. or does the or does the style not matter? It just needs to be presented with passion and conviction. What do you think? Wow, I think it's probably a bit of both. Um, so to answer your question with a question, <laughs> what what, what you rabbi? Be Can I do that? Am I allowed to do that? Yes, okay. hell yeah! Cool, cool, cool. Um, what would be better to have a less current style that's presented really well, or a very current style that's presented disastrously? The first every time the first. for me. Yeah. I, I, I would probably say so. I mean, I think the million dollar question there to answer my, my, that question with another question would be how badly is the current style being presented? <laughs> and, and, and I, you know, I think, I think that is the other ingredient is that whatever you're doing, 
if you, you you have to have some degree of conviction if yes. you are trying to do something that you just cannot do and you see it the whole time I mean, you, you, you see it's like when all the opera singers when, all, when the opera world and the, the, the pop world merged and and they started they started doing all these duets and, and some worked um but there were a lot of opera singers and i i i, I know from chatting with opera singers uh, back in South Africa, where you know, if you wanted to do voice coaching, that was the only thing you could you could learn was opera. There, there weren't. Okay. We didn't we didn't have pop vocal coaches or anything like that. So everything was just opera. And there was this 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 unwritten thing among opera singers where they were like, opera is everything, well, classical mm. singers everything, and everything else was called light music. And 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 okay. more than that, there was this notion of well, yeah, we're classically trained, we're opera singers, we can sing anything. We can sing anything, darling, you know, and, and, and so you would have these opera singers singing pop stuff. And it was so it was so wrong on, on every single level. So, some, so, you know, occasionally weird stuff like that can just work. It, it, and, and so there's always there's always an exception. But I think it's like everything, you know, if, if you are if we're trying to rap or do whatever or, or we're trying to do Billie Eilish now in church because we want to be down with the kids. But you are a million miles away from that. It, it's the holes are going to show in that narrative. Um, I got, I got so, a question for you. Yes, yes. Because obviously we haven't spoken about it yet, but you were worship leader in a church in Oxford. Am I correct? Cambridge. Not Oxford, Cambridge. 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 It was Cambridge. Um, C three. No, don't, don't don't ever do that again. They they, they, they hate each other. Oxford. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously, no, cool. so yeah. kind of. Um, uh, well, like talk about that as well in a second. Um, cool. But did did you have any experience of kind of that when you were uh, like the worship leader there? No, I always got it right. <laughs> 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 you know, I probably I, I probably did that. I, I I don't even want to think about that. I'm I'm sure I would have. I, I'm sure, just in musical terms, I have attempted to do stuff that is just not my thing not my forte yeah um and and you know what to be fair i i would always say to everybody just just try everything at least give it a go yeah because um, we're human right we're gonna make mistakes and that's we're okay gonna, we're gonna make mistakes and and you know when i talk about those beautiful mistakes that, that, that those beautiful um mishmashes that, that 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 shouldn't work but just do you wouldn't get those if you didn't just try yeah totally, so I, totally. i'm all for trying you know and if you want to I think we. I think it's it's better to at least give it a go, and 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 that you know you, you'll get that little to to create a, a bizarre um, example. You know where, where you got the little eighty year old church organist who up till now has only ever played hymns on the organ, who tries to connect with a younger generation and play their stuff. Kudos to her. You know if, mm. if she gives that a go, even if she fails. Um, there's there's something to be said for that. So yeah, I'm 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 sure I've made those mistakes. I'm I'm sure that I have done that. And, yeah. and I think I think that that's why it's good to have people around to say, to to kind of really guide us and encourage us in, in, in the stuff that that we are good and good at. And, and I think it's important too. You know, we 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 work with musicians in church who are going to be from a wide variety of different musical styles and genres and even though we may all be playing the same kind of thing on a Sunday morning people are coming from different different musical backgrounds people are going to be doing different stuff and especially when people start writing songs and, and doing all, all that sort of thing I think it's great when we genuinely encourage people when they are doing stuff that is 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 working and is, is good mm. yeah um, so yeah. so my kind of follow-up question there because we talked in previous episodes about like having worship that brings out of the culture of the church rather than kind of necessarily just emulating the big worship yeah. like the worship um um teams in america and australia um yeah so what what's your preference what would be you know if you were given kind of free reign what kind of style Ooh. of worship would you like to play and um, which essentially i guess a sideways way of asking what what's your kind of main style of music that you're into <laughs> that is a huge question. Um, I genuinely could not pin that down to one one thing. I really couldn't. Because um, on on a daily basis, I, I I will listen to 
very, very different, very different stuff. Um, I, I would really want to echo what you just said. I, I think we can make the mistake of all trying to sound like the big, the big thing that's out there. Um, and I've seen that. I've, I've seen people who not only try to sound like it, try to look like it, try to emulate it in every way. And I think as human beings, we are very good at copying. We're, we're very good. Um, some, some nations more, more so than others. But we, we are very good as, as human beings at being able to co copy and mimic. Um, I remember once seeing this, this bunch of people who we, we'd sort of rubbed shoulders with. We'd been to the conferences and stuff and um, we, we sort of had known about them and saw them on Sunday morning TV, the ones we hadn't been to church. Saw them on TV and I went, oh, it's Hillsong. And, um, and, and my wife said to me, no, that's not. That's these guys. And I was like, no, no, that's Hillsong. That's, that's Darlene Check. And she's like, no, it's really not. <laughs> and I, I am face blind, so you know, watching a movie, I, I'll get halfway through and be like, "Who's she? She looks a lot like, she looks a lot, a lot like Sandra Bullock." And I'll be like, "Yeah, that's who she is. She's the main character. She's been in the movie since the first scene." So yeah, I mean, watching, watch, I am face blind. Watching movies is, is hard work for me, but um, I was so convinced that it was Hillsong and it was Darlene Check. This is a long time time ago, so. So, I, I, Steve, I, I so agree. And one of the immense privileges that I personally have had is growing up in South Africa. And when we did start pushing the envelope and, and we, we, I was in a church that wanted to do different kinds of music, one of the frustrations we often felt was we're getting all this music, no offense, I live here in the UK now, but we're getting all this music from the UK um, and it's, it's all a specific sort of thing. When our church started to changed its face and we started getting a lot more African people into the church and we started connecting with a lot more African people um, and, and this sort of happened throughout South Africa we started asking the inevitable question should we be should we be playing music that reflects this culture in this country a little bit more mm. and so there were some incredible worship songs that came out from that and some wow that sounds music. awesome that can, yeah, I mean, we, we would start doing a lot of Zulu songs on a Sunday morning. Amazing. Um, and it, it, it was. It was incredible. It, I would love to see that more. And again, it, it's like anything. That can go so horribly wrong, you know. We're all going to do, like, the culture of this church. And then you'll get some tiny little church in the middle of nowhere where it just so happens that everybody in the community is, like, really, really, really into bluegrass. Mm. And, 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 and then you're going to get a worship team that's going to sound like it. Maybe that's not a bad thing if everybody there is like into that. But I, I, know, I know that that can go horribly wrong. Um, but I think, I think there's something to be said for people trying to embrace the culture of, where the, of, of, culture of their house, tr trying to embrace the culture of the people who are in that church rather than just trying to copy something that they've heard from, as you say, Australia or America. But you are, sorry, so I still didn't ask you, ask you a question. What kind of style would that be? I, did, I don't know, man. What are you listening this to morning, right now? What's, what's, um, what's on your on, You're telling on me about playlists? that really cool song. Was that really cool, that song you were talking about the other day? Like Cheeky Girls or something, was it? <laughs> <laughs> you slander me, sir. Um, <laughs> this morning I left the house, and it, it, so he, he has a great example. I was listening to... Um, I, I, I left the house and just as I was getting ready, I put on some, some like church choir, gospel, black gospel choir kind of stuff. I, I haven't listened to that in a long time. I just so felt like listening, listening to that this morning. And, and man, I, I had church here. I took myself to church. That's awesome, dude. <laughs> and so, so yeah, I, I do. I really do like that, that, that style of, of, of music. Um, I was in, in Hillsong when I was in London for quite a while. Th that style of music is, is, is it's great. It's like very, very poppy. Um, but again, I, I think in, anything that, that's, that's executed well yeah. um, is, is great to listen to, you know? I think that's, that's the, dude, I, I love that. Like, that kind of goes back to what you're talking about at the beginning. Like if it's just done with passion and excellence, no matter like what style it is and like yeah. kind of, and if it's kind of if it comes out of the culture of your church or your community, yeah. 
it's going to be good. It's going to it's going to be good and it's going to be engaging. And it's I, I think that's <clears throat> that's like the, the main thing is doing it with excellence and yeah. making sure you're not trying to copy, making yeah. sure you're just it's coming from the heart of the people and not you're trying to like you're trying to be the big three. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, because yeah, yeah. like there are so many musicians at my church who are into like Snarky Puppy and oh really uh, yeah. snarky puppy yeah. yeah and that would be that'd be fun wouldn't it like just i mean it'd take, yeah. it'd take a lot of rehearsal but wouldn't it be <laughs> a lot y- you think <laughs> yeah but uh but it wouldn't be fun just to see like oh you know let's let's just for fun let's try a snarky puppy thing and um and just see what kind of cup shakes loose you know and and they, they have been they have i've 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 met and known and, and, and been around a lot of musicians who can really smash that that that, that style, hmm. and 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 when they you know and, and and your gig guys will take a an old worship song and then just reharmonize it and rework it, um, and it, it's great. It can sound hmm. incredible. I, I I know with something like it that is, I think the thing with, with something like it is it is very much a performance thing, and I think that this is what we have to be conscious of with whatever style we are, we are doing. If you're doing something that is very, very performance oriented and particularly, and I think that comes down to one thing or one thing only, and, and that is the, the vocals. I think it comes down to the vocals. If the vocals are, are such that they are very much an individual thing and they are very, um, they can't be sung along to very easily, then it's just not gonna work. I genuinely think if the music, even if the music is like ridiculously complicated, as long as the band is able to to pull that off, mm. if this if the melodies that are being sung, and if the delivery of that is very accessible to everybody there, it's going to work. And if you yeah. look at a lot of gospel stuff, that is exactly it. If you actually listen to musically what is being played, some of it is pretty crazy. Um, but if you just sing along to it you you can yeah my, my wife my wife helen was talking about um she went to like a i don't say what my wife helen you know who she is uh, but for the listeners my wife helen uh she she went to like a, a woman's worship thing um and she's she's a singer herself like amazing singer um so she's like mm, she it's is. not as if she can't sing along with things but she was t- uh, she was saying about this one of the worship leaders that came on and ended up kind of just going off on one with all the trills yeah. and all the frills and all the, all the jazz and stuff. And she was like, it took, I couldn't, I couldn't sing along. Like I just yeah. had to go into my own thing. And you're yeah. right. Like the band can, you could have a snarky puppy style band up there as you long could. as the kind of vocals are going to kind of facilitate people to sing along. Like me, yeah. I can't sing at all. Not even a little bit. So if I'm trying to sing along with like some crazy talented mental singer that's doing all this stuff, I'm gonna be lost. I'm just gonna be like, yeah. oh, I'm just gonna shush then. So, <laughs> and, and and I think because here, here's the thing, um, when you when you look at sung worship in 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 the Bible, there's so much instruction to musicians to play skillfully. Mm. Um, the, it's talk so so. There's so much reference to. Play skillfully. Bring a skilled musician. You know, when 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 Saul was was kind of going off, uh, um, going off on one. It was Saul. Have I have I got? Yes, it was Saul. David and Saul. I, I'm I'm confusing myself. <laughs> I'm not Saul. even going to jump in. For, for, <laughs> Please, for, somebody for fear, me. Fe- for fear of looking stupid. So yes, <laughs> yes, Wayne. But, sure. But you know, <laughs> it, it was bring a skilled musician to to calm this guy down. So that there's, and, and the Bible does talk the whole time about play skillfully, play skillfully, bring a skill. I will play skillfully on the, the ten string mm. instrument or whatever. But when, it, when, when the Bible talks about singing, the, I've not been able to find any reference to, to the Bible, to, to the word where it's saying sing skillfully. It says sing joyfully. That's, that's kind of about as much as it, as, as it says. It doesn't, I've, I've not been able to find anywhere where it says sing skillfully and and to me what that suggests is as musicians if you're playing in a worship team um there is a responsibility to to play skillfully and to be good and to to work hard at your your craft and to be able to deliver it really really well and and that's not just instrumentalists that's actually singers as well if you're a singer you are an instrumentalist that your your instrument is your voice yeah so you have a responsibility to be able to play that instrument including your voice 
really well. But if you are a singer and you are part of a singing team and there are four or five or ten of you or whatever there is, bear in mind you, you are one string of a ten stringed harp or a six string guitar or whatever. Mm. So you can't just go do your own thing. And, and, and this is often what, 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 we, what we see, you know. Um, often vocal groups in church are, are just like, um, without being unkind, it's like, guys, let's just, let's just really rehearse singing together and blending our voices really well so we can be so we can deliver something really good and and be a blessing to those who are going to be hearing us mm. and and i think so, so as musicians like i say including singers we have a responsibility to to work hard and be the best that we can but we we do that so that we can provide a platform for the congregation to be able to just jump in and feel like oh, the, the singing thing is easy. Like you said, Carl, you know, you wouldn't, you wouldn't class yourself as a singer, but it, I'm sure you've experienced this where you've been in a worship setting where the music is such that you feel, oh, I can do the singing thing. This is easy. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You feel comfortable. And now if, if you were singing to somebody who was like riffing it up and all over the place and had like just really, really got in touch with the inner Mariah Carey that morning, <laughs> and, and, and you, you're not going to be able to follow that. Um, and, and again, I, I think as 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 worship leaders, as and I, as people who are on that side of of, of the worship ex- experience, there's so much responsibility on us to to remove every obstacle to allow the congregation to just very very easily and quickly enter into that um, worship experience and to be able to connect with with Jesus. Okay, let's jump into our second question, um, cool. which is, what is your favorite thing about congregational worship? I'll try and answer this because I don't think I answered your, your previous question. I'm very good at not ask, answering questions. What is my favorite <laughs> thing about congregational worship? All of it. <laughs> <laughs> you make no, a really good politician. Well, qu- um, question you know, three is going to be hard if all of it's your favorite. Yeah. <laughs> you know you know what um it, it is that 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 sense of being with a whole bunch of other people and that sense of community um because you know we we we, we are made to to be in in community we, we, we're made to be around other people we all know that mm. so very very well now you know and if anything good has come of of, of the last year it's that more people probably realize that and know that and don't take other people for granted. Um, we, we know what it is to be isolated and, and, you know, a lot of us are very fortunate. We, we have family, so at least we do see other people. Uh, I've spoken to people who literally are on their own and have been on their own for very long periods of time. So we, we are made to be in, in community, to be in contact with people on, I think on, on pretty much every single level. And so, whilst there is something very beautiful and very intimate in just sitting in your living room on your guitar or your piano or whatever and, and pouring out your heart to God. And, and I think, I think that, 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 is, that is something incredibly special. Um, I think more people need to do that. Even if you're not a great, even if you can't play, just put on some music and, and just sing along. Those, those close intimate times are, are really beautiful. But equally so, in a corporate setting, when you where you are with a whole bunch of other people, there's something very powerful in that. There, there is a sense of community. There's a sense of we're all we're all bringing something very precious to Christ right now in this moment, um, and we're all contributing to that. And again, that, that that comes back to to the worship team being able to facilitate that in such a way that people do feel like they are an extension of the worship team but they're just spectating um I, I, i've got to apologize I, i've i've made the assumption that this is primarily for worship leaders and worship bands and you know worship teams and and i guess that's not really the case it's for everybody um yeah. so if i if i've made a wrong assumption i, I do apologize 
Um, no, no, no. Like, I mean, you, you could be like, we want kind of everyone to kind of just speak from their own experience. I mean, and you've got yeah. masses of time and experience within worship teams and stuff. So like, that's what we want, dude. Um, cool. Okay, ju- cool. Just go- going on um, off the back of kind of the community community aspect, because that's one of my favorite things, too. Yeah. Um, even, even coming from someone who is kind of a bit more, for lack of a better term, like the lone wolf. Um, like, I, I can like, I can be like, fine by myself for a really mm. long time and like I was okay through like I mean like I mean I had my family so that was probably why I was fine to be honest um so like having my family has kind of kept me sane but like I I do enjoy spending time by myself I like I'm an only only child and I kind of like I, I can just relish in, in that as well but through this like you were saying I really really have started to understand more than I ever have before the the importance of community and like I, mm. I, throughout my life I've always had like like pockets of really close friends I'd much rather have like three or four really close friends than 30 or 40 acquaintances I, 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 yeah. and, I and I'm still exactly the same um but like I am starting to become more aware of how important a large community is yeah. um and, and like that kind of how we find that through worship and being together. Um, just, I want to ask the question, like, obviously, I don't think we're ever going to get it perfect because we're human and we're fallible and all things like that. Um, but one thing I've noticed, and we've slightly talked about this before on the podcast, is kind of churches as they used to be run before lockdown and maybe some still kind of trying to follow the same kind of schedule and things like that. Um, I find that community is very hard to actually establish when it's only like a, an hour and a half on a Sunday morning. Um, Mm -hmm. As much as you try and kind of do your small groups and and things like that, like it, it is, it is, it is hard, especially when church. And I, I do, I don't, I don't mean this in like a really bad way, but like church, can be a bit of a like a, a gig you know I mean like you turn up at a certain time you yeah it's a certain like this happens at this time the announcements happen the worship happens then the preacher comes up then you may have like a quick coffee at the end for 10 minutes and that's your community and that's your relationship building yeah. and then you kind of go home um kind of how would you kind of envisage 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 <laughs> kind of like coming out of like lockdown and kind of going moving closer into that community. And I think worship's got such a big part of that as well. Yes. Wow. Um, are you talking specifically worship or, or church in general? Kind of, ev- kind of everything, like kind of church in general. Because, um, like, I mean, what's the point in kind of talking worship mm. if we're not ta- ch- talking community yeah. and church at the same time? Um, yeah, kind of the whole thing. I don't know, because I, I don't think any of us really knows what it's going to look like um, mm. post lockdown or whatever that means like is it you know is it is it ever going to be a post lockdown is it going to be a line in the sand where it's like right we've drawn a line in the sand now we're going back to normal or people talk about there's going to be a new normal so i don't think anyone really knows what life is going to look like from here on in um and and that does have a huge effect on church i mean we, we've been meeting as a church uh we've been we've been allowed to in wales and we, we've done that as much as we can but it's still, it's a completely different animal altogether, you know? It's like, mm. you have to get there 20 minutes earlier, which is a good thing. That's just so that people can kind of get in, so, you know, just the, the logistics of getting into a building, still social distancing and all of that. Um, being part of the worship team, you, you, you're there early anyway, so I, I, I personally haven't really noticed that. But um, the thing you notice the most is is after church, it's like, doors are open and everyone just like walks out in the same direction immediately yeah and and that that is that is strange um i I do think i do think because we've all we all have felt the impact of of not being able to just hang out with with friends and not just be in community i I think people are going to appreciate it a lot more hopefully we never lose sight of that hopefully we, we never hopefully we never take people for granted again um and i think in in church circles it's probably gonna depending on 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 what the the regulations because we are, we are going to be regulated by 
we're going to be regulated. Um, hmm. Depending on, on, on what that looks like, I, I think people are probably going to spend a lot more time and make more of the small group setting, which I don't think is a bad thing. I, I, I really think it's a don't great think thing. it's a bad thing. Um, as much as I, I, I do love corporate worship and as, as much as I do love the big thing, I think because that is such an attractive thing and because it's been so beautifully marketed and let, let's be honest, it has been marketed. There, there's, yeah. You know, you, you have all the, all the CDs and well, it's not CDs anymore. It's just streaming or whatever. It's, but you, you, you have all the, the, the songs that are coming out on whatever platform it is. And, and they're beautifully produced and they're beautifully marketed, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And, and, and even the visuals of that, you know, you, you, can, you can go to the biggest church in the whole world and, and be part of their worship experience by just going online, you know, or watching a YouTube clip or whatever. I think the whole big thing, we, we all know, even little kids in the, in the township in South Africa where they don't have electricity or running water know what that looks like. And we've all tried to emulate it. And I think we've got very good at doing the very big thing. But the very small thing, um, even the connect groups and the, the home groups and the small groups or whatever you want to call them, um, I'm going to be really honest. I, I've, I've often struggled with them. I've, I've mm. struggled with, with as much as I love that close community. It's like, okay, we're going to connect group, home group, cell group, whatever you call it. I mean, they've called it different things through the years to try and <laughs> repackage it and, and, and rebrand it and, and, and trick you into thinking it's something else. It's like, it's the same thing. <laughs> 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 and you, 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 are, you are so often sitting with a, a mixed bunch of people who you do love, okay, because they are brothers and sisters in Christ, but some of which you ordinarily would not really hang out with. And, and then who gets to decide how big that group is? Some people love a group of 15 people. Some group, some people don't. Some people, you know, a small group is, is three of you. That's it. Some people, a small group is, is maybe eight. Everyone's idea of a small group is going to be a different thing. Mm. And, and I, I do think, and I do hope that what church starts to look like from here on in is, is going to be... Carl, you're coming over for breakfast, you know, and, and yeah. maybe coming with Steve. And, and in a very informal setting, us just like hanging out, having breakfast, and then being, and then getting to a point where we talk about some very, very real stuff. Um, mm. And, and we, we talk about some very real stuff in the context of, w with a, a Christ centered agenda. Mm. Yeah. Um, I think we just like we like and that, I'm like not painting the the whole church with just one brush, because um, it is down to the individual as well. But like I think it is, it is about like doing that, like making space and normalizing meeting with meeting with your like other people from your church just yeah. as a friend mm, and things yeah. like that. And like I, I, I like ask a question here, and I kind of probably know the response, but like just to kind of get it on the podcast, like do you think like just building that community more and deeper than it kind of ever has been and just building those friendships and making time for, for each other. And, and like, like you said, cause we've gone through a year of not being able to see each other. We all now really see the importance of it. Do you think that could really impact our congregational worship when we actually come together? Yeah, I think it does because you know, when you, when you've, when you're coming together out of something like that, where, where there has been some real connection, um, it, it, it's, I think it's going to look like a different thing. And, and there, there is that sense of, of, it's almost like the army has now gathered. We all, we mm. all gathered together. And, and there's something very powerful in that. And especially when it is, it, it is centered around essentially lifting up the name of Christ. It, it is Christ-centered. But it's through the, 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 the medium of, of, of music, sung worship. There's something very powerful in, in, in that. I mean, I, I, I think our world has become much more music aware. Um, I think people have always, everyone's always been into, into music. But I, I think with a lot of the technology that we, we've, we've got, where everybody can have a go at being a bit of a musician, I think mm. there are a lot more people who 
connect with music on a very different level now than, than we did, say, 15, 20 years ago. And so we, when you come together in that, in that context, um, it's a recipe that it, that is 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 has a lot of potential for some some very very cool things to happen, and, and I think people will, people do come w with a different kind of expectation and 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 just with a, it looks like a different sort of thing if that makes any sense. Mm. Um, no, it's it's awesome because it like uh, like one of my favorite scriptures is when Jesus says like people know you're my followers by the way that you love each other, yeah. and yeah. I think that just that will seep into everything so like yeah like on i think it was episode four i think it was episode four we're talking to lois it was episode yeah, four episode wasn't four. it um and she she just had a comment and i thought it was the most beautiful comment she's like imagine what like a church service or worship would be like if you walked into the room and you just loved each other like christ loves you mm. like uh, that experience would just be a million times yeah. more impactful, deeper for you, deeper for like the like the people who are on the fringes who've just come in. They've stumbled yeah. into church that day to like witness that that Christ like love between yeah. us as brothers and sisters, mm. and then seeing that come and radiate through the worship. I think it would yeah. just be so powerful. If we rewind to the beginning of this, we talked about you know what is your first experience. And, and I suppose the first significant experience was walking into that, that, that youth group. Mm. Um, you know, two of my friends on guitar, just who I didn't know at the time, but two people on guitar just singing a whole bunch of songs. The, the, the th that impacted me, but the, the other thing that really, really impacted me with that was just exactly that. It was the, the way, it was a bunch of kids, but it was the way everybody loved everybody else. Mm. Th there was something, there was a very tangible presence of God and a very tangible love and acceptance in, the pla in that place, you know. And this is a bunch of teenagers. And it, it, it that, r that really did cause me to come back, you know. That was mm. one, one of the things that, that caused me to come back. It was like, wow, this is a place where I feel really accepted and loved. And there's some nice people here. Mm. Yeah, um, and sometimes that, that, that's all it takes is just, yeah, you know, the people who are there, they're nice people. They're not nice to be around. Um, I think I'll go back there. Okay, and then our third question, then this is the doozy, uh, kind of coming off of something that like super, super kind of like great and like positive and stuff. And I like, obviously we, we try and keep these conversations as positive as we can. Uh, but like the third question is, if you could change anything, like if you could have like a, like a magic wand and you could just go bing and just change one thing. I mean, you can say more than one thing if you want to, but like something that you would love to see changed within our Western modern kind of worship culture. More cowbell. <laughs> More <cowbell>. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Woo. Um, that is a huge question that is a very huge question um, okay so again we we do we do the worship experience so well uh, you know and I, I don't say that lightly I've, I've been to not loads and loads of churches but I've been to you get to go to different churches and, and you get to see you see enough to realize that most people nowadays are at least producing something that that is halfway decent there are still churches you go into and the the worship is shambolic and and it it's you know but it's nothing that can't be fixed just somebody lovingly coming on and saying hey you know what guys we can we can make this thing sound a lot better so i i, I don't think <clears throat> i don't think there's too much of that to clean up like i say there are some you will find churches where, where the music needs a bit of a, a hand. But for the most part, globally, generally speaking, I, I think the church is doing very well at producing great music. Um, we do have the big guys who are writing incredible songs. Um, I would love to see more people writing more songs and, and more, more obscure songs kind of getting through. I would love to see the songs that are sung not just limited to the big three, as you put it earlier on, Carl. I, th I think <clears throat> it was you who said that. Um, <clears throat> it'd be great. And, and, and there was a time when there were, you know, th there would be this random, obscure worship song that got written by somebody from a remote part of nowhere. 
um, that just suddenly caught caught fire and 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 people started singing it and and you would get these songs i'd love to see more of that and part of that i think you know god does have a hand and and god promotes and he 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 lifts up and he he brings down um there's a part of me that 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 trusts that god is is looking after that and and but it would be great I, i think because there is also this um if we're talking about the music, it has become, when you look at, at, at any of the big churches, they are churches, absolutely, but a lot of them are also record labels. Let's just be yeah. honest about that. They, mm. There yeah. is an arm to them. That is a, a record label. Yeah. And and they are producing great songs, and they have great songwriters, and, and that, that's great. And so we're getting some good stuff. Um, it, it would be great if there was other stuff that it wasn't, just limited to that mm. i think we, we we see it we see it in the secular world again that is very very much controlled by the powers that be but i think people are more looking for something that's very very different and very very out there very not run of the mill whereas mm. i think in church we, we, we've tended to to kind of settle for okay this is the way we do it and things don't change very quickly you know we, we are playing songs in church that are some songs are like 10 years old but they they you know we, we still see them as how yeah, we're doing current really current worship <laughs> and so yeah that song's actually 10 years old or older mm. um and the style of music is 10 years old or more yeah um and so it would be great to i, I think i think this is where we do need to make space for young young guys and girls in the church to to bring their thing um and and again that that can be messy that can be ridiculously messy because you're gonna have you're gonna have all sorts i mean that that is a recipe for potential disaster too you could have all sorts of things go wrong on that but also you could have a lot of um young guys and girls who 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 want to bring through what they're hearing but they they can't actually execute that on the instruments yet they can't really play that that, that well at, at right now um, mm. having said that i mean I'm, I'm i'm seeing more and more so many kids are playing ridiculously well my my, my own daughter my, 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 both my kids my um my son's 17 my little girl is 14 they both play ridiculously well um my son plays guitar. Steve, he, he, I've got to introduce you to him. He would love you. He'd yeah, love, man. Absolutely. He'd love your pedal board. He'd probably love your pedal board more than you. But, you know, <laughs> sometimes, I love, sometimes I love my pedal yeah. board more than me. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, can, I, I can imagine that. You've you got to see Steve's pedal board. But, you know, he's taught himself to play guitar. He plays by tab and he, he, plays, all that. he plays incredibly well. My, my daughter plays piano. She's, she's taught herself. She improvises. She was playing yesterday. I was like, I don't know how you got so good so quickly. Um, so I've seen some kids who play ridiculously well, and, and I, th- I think we do we do have the talent there to bring kids in and go like, okay, so what what would you do with this worship song, or, or mm. what would you do if you had, you know, m- maybe not present the whole the whole morning, but maybe do a song or two, and, and I think we as as um, people have been around for a lot longer who've been involved in worship and in music and in church for a lot longer, who've got, who've got years and years and years of experience, we, we, that's all we have. We have so much experience to be able to help those younger ones and really shape them and mold them and say, okay, well, that's cool. That's a great idea. How about you do this? And this is probably going to work better if we do it like this. And w- w- that side of it, we could do that. That's easy. Yeah. Um, it would be great to see... I listen to my, my, my kids play, and I'm like, and especially my, my, my daughter improvises more so. My, my, my son likes to play by tab, and he plays stuff that he's heard. Um, my little girl's got a really inquisitive, what can I do to the song, and how can I make it my own? And I'll often listen to stuff that she's come up with, and I'll go, oh, I would never have come up with that. That's, that's awesome. That's cool. Um, and I think we have so much of that in the church. I, I think we just need to discover it. Um, and I think we'd be quite shocked, you know, if we were to sit down with some of the, the, the kids and go like, so do you think the music we're playing is current? Do you think it's, it's like 
hip and down with the kids and they'd probably go no <laughs> no <laughs> maybe maybe they wouldn't and 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 again i think there we we yeah i, I think it's worth exploring i mean that, that's on a musical level i think um i think it would be good to see to see some other i think also we we've we've tried uh, well at least in churches that i've been in um some people have tried to bring some other styles of music, some sort of world music. Uh, be, growing us up in South Africa, we, we automatically had that. We, we had that by default. Hmm. Um, actually, we didn't have it by default. We, we had actually make a decision to go, right, we're going to start bringing in some of the music that, that some African music and some, some kind of music that, that we play in this country. Um, and that was awesome. That was really, really awesome. So it, it would be lovely to see people from other other countries doing different styles d different different kinds of music i know that there was um martin smith and some of the guys teamed up with some asian worship leaders and they did some like very asian indian sounding music which is beautiful really really beautiful oh that's cool um that would be exciting to see in in church and not just for the sake of like okay we're going to have a little token item that we're going to do that's going to sound a little bit middle eastern or whatever yeah. But to actually incorporate some of those sounds, uh, I think we, we as Christians, in many respects, we should be, we should be leading the way um, in terms of the arts and music and, and, and every, every form of creativity. You know, yes. We're serving a God who, who is, he kind of, the thing that he did is he, he created, you know. <laughs> so he's, he's quite good at creating and, and creativity is quite high on his agenda, I think. Um, I could be wrong on that, but we, we should be at the forefront of, of all that, that's happening. Now, I, I know, you know, some would say, but they're, they're, they're agendas and they're people who are controlling that. And, and, and there is a Satan who is running around and who is also got more power in, in, in that realm than, than, than we would like. So I, I, know, I know that there are all those things to consider, but it would be great to see to see a lot more of that happening um what else would what else could we change does that answer the just, question can i yeah no can i like just jumping in there i think that's yeah. a really good point of kind of like not kind of letting or i don't think it's kind of letting but like like obviously the big three and they've got this style and it's like it's like mm. it's great and we've talked about this before like it's it's very delicious but vanilla ice cream do you know what I mean like it's yeah. there's some absolute bangers they are there really is but yeah it's not everything like, i remember um me and helen got in a, in our old church we got asked to come and speak to the youth because we're both involved in worship and uh the youth leaders wanted us to come and just talk to the youth about worship mm. just for one of the one of the times there and we were like we were really honored like of, of course we will and one of the things that i remember speaking about was was kind of this and it was about like guys like start listening to other stuff and like i think my main reason for that was like our god is so big and he's so indescribable and he's so like sometimes hard to understand and fathom and mm. and, and everything and everybody's got their own individual revelation of who jesus is to them yeah um and i, th I said to them like by listening to someone who's not Hillsong for a change or not Elevation for a change or not Bethel for a change, where they've got obviously their own revelation from those people and it's beautiful and it's awesome. But go and find some other stuff because you might learn something new. You might hear something yeah. that you'll go, well, I've never, I've never thought about Jesus in that way before. Oh my gosh, like I never even, Jesus thinks that about me? Like, like even yeah. recently there's a song that Helen found um, by an artist called um, Judah, full stop. The full stop is actually involved in the in the name um and it's a beautiful song um and it like the lyric just hit me it hit me yeah. really hard and it just says it's like I, and i can't sing like i said but because he loves me because he loves me because he loves me just because he does and like that mm. that just because he does was like wham and it's so simple and yeah. like I, it's not as it's, i haven't that's not something that like like, like the big three, they don't say, it's not mm. as if they don't say that. They, of course, they'd sing songs about Jesus loving us, but it, it was the way that it was written, so simple and so intimate of like, he loves me just because he does. Like, I was just yeah. like, I was like smacked in the face. So dude, yeah. that was, I, that's, I think that's a really great point. Yeah. 
Mm, definitely. I think. That's beautiful, man. That is beautiful. Because I think it requires a certain amount of, like you say, like, I'm like this is kind of a theme that keeps coming up in the podcast. It's like, it requires a certain amount of embracing mess. Uh, it, it requires a certain amount of uh, giving permission to make mistakes. Yeah. It requires a certain amount of relinquishing control. Yeah. It, you know, but like, yeah, like, but the thing is, like, yeah, as you say, like, in terms of creativity, like, God has, in a lot of ways, relinquished a lot of control. Like, yeah, like, if you walk through, I, I, I'm, my mind is blown by this, like, just walking through a city like Cardiff, where I live, like, you just look like none of this naturally occurred. Yeah. Like, human beings utterly transformed the landscape that this city is built on. Yeah. And have made something beautiful. Like, cause I think yeah. cities are beautiful. Like, I think they're gorgeous. And obviously, like, nature has its own, has its own beauty. Um, the, the utter transformation of the landscape that they represent. Um, that's a certain, that is relinquishing on God's part. That is relinquishing yeah. a huge part of creative control. Um, because, you know, like, there is space for mistakes to be made because sometimes cities mm. cities expand too far and encroach upon beautiful nature and um yeah. sometimes you know what i mean there there are there is there is space for mistakes to be made yeah i, I think it is it is really important because i've heard it said that um often when there's something new happening in the church um it often will start with the musicians and, and, and with, with music and with worship. Um, and, and not that there's, you know, the Bible talks about th there's, there's nothing new under the sun. Um, I don't think God has to, I don't think God has to change the way he does things because he didn't get it wrong in the first place. Um, but, but we, we do. And, and mm. because we are, because culture is evolving the whole time in the non Darwinian sense of the, of the term, um, and because we, we do have young ge younger generations coming through, we can't expect to just be doing the same thing that we've done, no matter how current it was when we started doing it. Um, and if we cast our minds back, a lot of that was done in, not in rebellion, but in, um, in, in contrast to what was around at the time. And so it, it stands to reason that, that, that we need to make space for a new thing to happen. A new thing, and, and like I say, um, it, it does seem that that when when something new starts to take place in the church, it often is sort of um, off the back of the, the worship, the music, the the mm. style of all of that. That that's yeah, yeah. It, I'm just it, thinking back to like conversations I've had before, um, and kind of talking about like. Uh, uh, like a time in history where like maybe the the rhetoric coming from the church was a bit of a message of kind of hell and damnation and and like you have sinned and all and this sort of thing but if you look back to the music kind of coming out yeah. at the same time as this it was so full of grace and yeah. so full of love and yes. forgiveness and th there's something about music that just like for me really gets into the heart of god regardless yeah. of kind of what is going around and yeah. like you said it's like it's it's like this catalyst that changes everything yeah i mean if you if you look if you look in the old testament when they, when they went into battle they would often put the the musicians and, and, and the singers at the front which is is kind of it's quite quite an interesting <laughs> war strategy um but <laughs> you know and and a lot of those a lot of the singers and musicians, there was something very prophetic about them too. And, and so it's, it's not a surprise to me that, that it's often the, the, the musicians, the singers that are at the forefront of what is happening in church. Um, I think for me, it, it's, it's another reason that it's, it's, I would love to see more people writing songs and, and expressing the, their heart of worship because like you say, Carl, even when we've been through through seasons in history where there has seemed to be a lack of grace in the church globally speaking mm. there have still been there's been a voice that has come through that through the songs through through the hymns yeah. which is so full of grace and and you know we talked about 
Steve, what you said earlier on, you know, at some point we all realize that those hymns are, are actually really beautiful and so rich lyrically and, and in terms of what they convey. That is so true. And, and we, we see that. We see that message. Some of, some of those lyrics are unbelievable, which is why people will take those hymns and rehash them. Um, and there's, there's no crime in that. But it, it's, it's lovely when, when people start expressing that and writing that and saying these same old truths but in different language, in, in rich language. Um, a band that I really love is, is 21 Pilots, and my understanding is that both those guys, they don't build themselves as a Christian band, but both those guys are born-again committed Christians, as far as I know. I could be wrong on that, but that's, okay. th- th- that's I didn't what know I understand. That. Um, but looking at some of their lyrics, you, you, you see that. You know, I, I read his lyrics, and they, they, they sing about some... Some, some dark stuff that they, they, I think both guys have suffered with their, their mental health, with anxiety, with, with all sorts of stuff like that. They, he sings about that, um, doesn't shy away from that, sings about, or not about, but sings against suicide, encouraging, you know, their, their message. There's a very strong message saying, don't, don't kill yourself, um, which is yeah. very, very good. Don't, don't kill yourself. That's, if you get nothing from this podcast, <laughs> Listen to this. Don't kill yourself. Really, I mean that seriously. Um, mm. Seriously, if you feeling that at any point, find somebody who you know is 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 gonna love you and not judge you, and is is gonna take you out for coffee and 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 be able to just be there for you. That is, that's my tangent for the evening. Seriously, no, don't, that's so important though. D- don't don't anybody, please don't don't kill yourself. Um, but they sing about that, and, and some, of his, some of his lyrics, I can't think of anything offhand, but some of that lyric content, it's like, wow, there's a message of God's grace and reaching out to us and forgiveness, and it's so beautiful. It's just, I, I, I listen to it and find myself like literally being reduced to tears. So I, I think we, we have so much that we, we have so much as humans. We, God, has, God has gifted us. He hasn't just gifted, like you say, the big three. Um, I would love to see more people writing songs. I would, I, 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 I'm constantly telling myself, you, you, write more, write more. Finding time is difficult, but it can be done. Um, yeah. So I, I'd love to see more of that. I'd, I'd love to see more different styles of, of music. I'd, I'd like to see stuff that doesn't just sound like the big three. Having said that, I know because we are in church, and we do have we do have to cater f- to the youngest from from the oldest to the youngest, and we we've got to find some kind of middle ground. Mm. It's um, hard, isn't it? It's difficult, yeah. It's difficult, and so I, I think a lot of the, the the songs that are out there that are, are being that have been picked up, I think a lot of them do that very very well. But then even among those the big three, as you put it, if you if you listen to the stuff that they're doing. Even that has got a wide that, that that spans quite quite a big um, big range of different musical styles. So you you'll have um, the youth arm of whatever it is doing some very different stuff that that you know they'll be doing stuff which in five ten years time is what everybody else is going to be doing that will become the mainstream sort of thing. Yeah. So that, that they do they are very good at building in th- that that capacity for the the younger guys to just have a go. And, and a lot of the time, the, the young guys just have a go and end up producing something that is amazing that becomes the main thing just in a few years' time. Um, but again, wh- why just leave it for the big three or, or, or the main players to do that? L- let's all be doing that, not because we're trying to compete with them, but because I believe that is the right thing to be doing. I think it's right to be giving, giving the next generation, giving our kids the space to, to, to be able to do that. Um, one of the things, and I don't say this lightly, one of the things that I think I got right, and, and I, don't, I don't say that often because, you know, you look back in life and you go, well, wow, have I got anything right? But <laughs> one, one of the things that for some reason, I, I, it must have been a, a bit of a God moment when I, I literally had a conversation with my, myself concerning my kids. And I went, whatever you do, don't, don't push them into music don't push them to do your thing don't don't put your thing onto them you know and right from the word go I was like oh god I would love it if my kids played music I would love that so much um, 
and I, I think it probably will happen because w we are both musical. Um, you know, th they've got music on both sides of the family. I'm pretty sure it'll happen, but there's no guarantee. You know, you, you get some <clears> people who are musicians and, and th they have a kid who's tone deaf, can't play anything, never will. So that was always my prayer, but I really felt very, very strongly, do not push this upon your kids. Do not try and make your thing their thing. Give them all the space in the world to do whatever it is that they want to do. And, and if there's one thing that I think I, I, I probably got fairly okay, I think it's that one thing. You know, when, when my son <laughs> asked for a guitar, I, I, I was like, dude, you, you don't play guitar, you play drums. You, you don't even play guitar, and our guitars are quite difficult to play. And he's like, no, I really, I really would like to, to have a guitar. So I got them both guitars for Christmas, thinking that he would sort of give it five minutes and, and that would be it. I try to show him how to play chords. I try to teach him everything that I knew. When I saw that he really was into it, I try to teach him everything that I knew. And he just wasn't having it. And again, I was like, ah, oh, he's not going to stick with this. The next thing, he's playing all these, 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 these songs. I'm like, how have you done that? That's awesome. Do, do you know what you're playing? Do you know what chords you're playing? He's like, no, I'm playing by tab. I can't play by tab. I don't know how it works. I, I know in principle how it works. But he, he just taught himself to do his thing. W w with my daughter, again, I was like so wanting to just go, okay, because she plays piano, like this is my instrument, I can show you how this thing works. You know, the, these chords all go together and, and the, these chord progressions you find in every pop song. And I, I so badly wanted to teach her the one, five, six, four progression. And, <laughs> and, and she sat down on the piano and she played a chord and then she moved like one finger and played a different chord and then moved another finger and like play these chords that wa walked up and, and chromatically did some crazy, she started playing crazy chords that I'm like, do, do you even know what that chord is called? It's like, not a clue. And I have to sort of look and go, that is a major, that, that, that is like a, a, a minor seven flat five. That, that's that is cool, like, dude. That's a crazy chord. Do you, do you know you're playing that? Not a clue. You know, and, and she's just stumbled upon her own thing for both of them. I think mm. the one thing that I, I managed to get right, and I really think it was a God thing, I really think it was God just like, not even whispering, a quiet, still voice, just shouting out, don't get this wrong! <laughs> I really think, <laughs> I, I, think really, I really do I think it's it was, really, I think that's, it's really important that, what you said then though, of like going, you know, like this is my thing and I'm not going to force it mm. on you. And I think that's really relatable to kind of, leading worship isn't it like like yeah. trying to not like and just being because i think i guarantee right your kids i guarantee part of the reason that they have been drawn to this is because they've seen this like authentic um th like this authentic passion for music through you like yeah. if you were to I force so. it on them it become it's just it's going to become this thing that it's like oh dad's trying to get me to do this thing and i don't really want to but they're watching you live this out. And they're mm. like, why does he love this so much? I want a, I want a part of that. Do you know what I mean? I, I do and hope I, I so. Think, yeah, and I think like leading uh, us as musicians in worship teams and stuff, I think it's such an important thing that we just lead from this place of like authenticity and this mm. just individual kind of sense of like this, I'm here, I'm doing this. Instead of trying to like, I, I've heard the phrase so many times, like we're going to like drag the congregation with us. It's like, no, yeah. just Go be there, worship, obviously yeah. be like attentive to the room, but like worship and just lead from a place of, a, of realness. Yeah. Well, that brings us to the end of another episode. Wayne, thank you so much for bringing your, you know, experience and wisdom. And there's just so, so much to, well, not just chew on, like feast upon from what you brought this morning, this evening. Um, and I really think, yeah, this is going to be, this is an episode I'm really looking forward to kind of seeing what comes out in the edit because uh, my wife edits the podcast for us and um, she comes to me with stuff like and I get to relive the episodes and she will say like oh you know like oh when you talked about this it was great when you talked about this it was great and I'm expecting a lot of that from this episode um so mate thank you so much for being with us this evening it's You're been welcome, great man. thank you so much for uh, it was me. Re it was really good buddy like and obviously like you're like my my, <laughs> my best mate so it's always great to kind of just 
kind of uh, chew the cud. Chew the cud? Is that a phrase? Let's I say that that's a is. phrase. It's probably th- a phrase. You know what? Well, let's make it a phrase. It's cool. <laughs> if it's, it's great not, to we'll chew make the cud with you, man. Um, but honestly, like, and I, I've said this kind of like with all the all the episodes, but like honestly, this has been so life giving. Like, there's been so much. Like, cool. like Steve said, like you've brought so much wisdom to this conversation, dude. So thank you. But it's been it, honestly, it's been so good. It's, it's been so good being here. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a real privilege. It honestly, has been. Um, cool. It's been great just chatting with you guys and seeing seeing people. Um, Yay! Thank you for listening to this week's episode of Deconstructing Worship. We hope that you got as much from it as we did. Uh, We would absolutely love to have you all involved in these conversations. So please find us at Instagram and YouTube, both under the handle at Deconstructing Worship. And please send in any emails with any questions or anything that you would love involved uh, within any kind of future episodes. And our email is deconstructingworship at gmail.com. And we will talk to you next week. Bye-bye.